So Hunter, have you seen a frog yet? Yeah. Did you get to hold him and yeah. like touch him? Yeah. Were, were they really loud? Yeah. Yeah, look were they mommy. cool? Look at me. Hunter, look at mommy. Just talk to mommy. How cool were the frogs that we just saw last night? Were they cool? Yeah. Uh, what'd you do? You took your flash. It's a snake. It's a snake. Hey guys, it's Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. Welcome back to part four, the final part. We are gonna finish this 20 by 40 rec pond here in Piles Grove, New Jersey. It is looking fantastic. It's a bit full right now. It's been pouring rain for probably about the last 10 hours, but we are extremely close to actually finishing this project. Drew and Bully have been working on this awesome cut flagstone patio, all irregular shape. Every single piece of the stone has to be cut to match the next one on all four sides, sometimes five sides, I guess. This is gonna come out in cantilever right over the pond. That's gonna be an awesome look there. The waterfall is really gonna be fantastic. There's gonna be cascades everywhere. We got stuff coming off the right side, over here in the middle, and then off to the left, more waterfalls. The wetland filter is probably about 6% done right now. We've gotta drop some more rocks over on this side here. You can see we've started to do our stepping stones going through the middle of it. Some more rock work over there and then we can clean up these edges and get this finished. As far as our pumping system goes, I got a little bit of plumbing left to do to do the feed lines and we can actually fire those up. Electrician came, gave us power, good to go. Then it's just clean up this mess everywhere because there is stuff every place. Starting off day nine, of course it's pouring rain this morning, but it's supposed to let up in the next couple hours. Hopefully that'll give us enough of a window to actually get this thing finished because I want to actually fire it up and get in this thing. Hopefully we can all go for a swim, which we don't usually get to do, right? Like we're working, 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 and they're like, okay, see you later, we're out of here. See if that happens this time. Let's get rolling on day nine. Well, I love an accent patio like this next to a feature, but these things take so much time. These cuts are so tedious. Every one of these pieces of flagstone is cut to fit the piece that sits right next to it. And then, once you cut all those pieces, you gotta come back, level it all out, keep some pitch to keep that water running away from the pond, because we don't want heavy rains washing all that rainwater in. So very slight pitch all the way out to the yard. This way, as it rains, it keeps everything clean. These guys have been working hard in that patio the last two and a half days. So yeah, it's definitely time consuming, but I don't think there's a better surface that goes with ponds than that flagging. Using a natural stone just marries up perfectly against the boulders, and it just has a different tactile feel than perhaps like pavers or concrete. I see so many comments about people wanting to know about plumbing. I'm going to show you some plumbing, I guess. These are our Aquascape EXT 12,000 external pumps. We've got two of them and they're going to be running to different areas. We've got our wetland filter, 
which is up here. There's also gonna be a dump line from each of the pumps going into the wetland to feed more volume for all these waterfalls. And then in the pond, we've got several jets in different locations that are all fed by these pumps. In order to make that happen, we need to draw water from somewhere. There is a pump vault right here with two check valves in it. I talked about check valves on the last video and how important it is for especially pumps like this. So these pumps have to be primed. If I just went ahead and turned them on and they were empty the lines, it would not pull any water because there's nothing in there to force a vacuum. So in order to make that happen, check valves are inside our pondless vault. These two lines right here are coming out of the pondless vault and they feed the inlet side of the pump, which is on the front here. So we've got one on this one, one on that one. Another thing to, important to remember is if you're installing inline pumps like this, you gotta be able to get them out put in unions. I've got a union here, I got a union there. If I had to get this pump out, I could just unscrew both those unions, the entire thing comes out. Also helps with winterizing. So, we're coming in with our two inlet pipes into the front of the pumps. From there, this is where the impeller is. So this is what's spinning from the motor, pulling that water and forcing it out the outflow pipe, which is feeding our jets and our wetlands and all that kind of stuff. In order to make sure this is primed, we installed a T on top with a threaded cap. Now, I take this threaded cap off and I put a garden hose in there. It fills this line with water down through the pump all the way in that intake pipe and it stops at our check valve because the flapper is closed. So once it fills up to the top and there's water up in the pipe, I know I'm ready to go and I can fire these pumps up. Same deal on this one. As long as I got that check valve in there and I've got my T with the fill cap, I am solid. Now from there, we're feeding these pipes up towards our wetland filter and we've got one that's going over towards our jets. Our jets actually have all their own ball valves on them so we can control the flow in the jets. Up here at the wetland filter, we're gonna be dispersing water through several pipes. So this is the other side of our jet pump. We're feeding four jets on one side and this is our line that is just dumping into the wetland filter. This other one is the wetland pump. We're coming in here and from there we're dispersing into two two-inch lines. I've got one going down to the bottom of the wetland and one dumping on top. The one going to the bottom, I'm gonna feed somewhere around five or 6,000 gallons an hour to our wetland filter. I don't wanna move a ton of water very fast through here. I want good contact time in the wetland filter for our biological activity to happen and our filtration to really work properly. So by splitting those lines, I can then dedicate how much water I want going to the bottom and the rest I can put up on top, which is gonna help give us the volume we need for our waterfalls. How's that for plumbing? You guys got more plumbing questions? I don't know what else to say, because that's it. That's all of it right here. It'd be very similar if it was a submersible pump, except for the fact that we don't have to worry about pulling vacuum up. A submersible pump sits in the water. As soon as you turn it on, it's already in water, so it's already creating that vacuum and pushing the water out to feed those different areas. So it's an easier pump to install and get going. But when you're talking about something like a rec pond, you have to have an external pump and you have to have an electrician that's gonna properly ground everything so there's no issues. We're coming close to the end here. We are just buttoning up the top of that wetland a little bit of work on the right side of the waterfall. These guys are kicking serious butt on that patio. Get this place cleaned up and plug those pumps in. Hang out, it ain't gonna be long. All right, let's go get Dana and Larry and see what they think. You guys ready? I think so, we gotta clean up our homeless looking child. <laughs> oh wow, that looks awesome. <laughs> wow, that's really nice. That's exactly what we were looking for. Yeah, waterfall. That looks, that's awesome. It looks great. Yeah, no, it looked really, really good. What do you think, Adeline?
we've had it for a couple days now, about four days. Uh, it's really been enjoyable, enjoyable to come out here and see it clear up day after day after day. I mean, the kids absolutely love it. They really do. They come out here, I mean, we're out here several times a day. Uh, they're climbing all over the rocks, in the wetland filter up top, climbing in the waterfall, jumping off the rocks. Me and Dana can just kind of sit on this, the flagstone patio and just kind of put our feet in, relax. It's just, it's been a real nice experience. But the funny thing is, I figured they would want to be in the deep end and all that, but they actually like the wetland the best uh, because it's shallow enough and that they can kind of just play in it like a little pool. Um, so they've been having a blast just kind of digging around and sitting up there and and um, they actually have really cleared out the water a lot so it's it's gotten to be a lot more clear since day one just from them uh, kind of playing around in it. <laughs> yeah they've been taking their toys up in there yeah. <laughs> playing all around in there. Couldn't be more happy that Larry and Dana and the kids are loving this pond. Let me walk you through and show you exactly what is going on here. Okay, the pond ended up being 20 feet across, 40 feet from this end all the way to where the waterfall is. We've got this really nice beach entry with the backstop of that flagging patio. That leads right out from the pavilion directly into here. They can get right in the water and just transition down to these lower areas. And then it has some steps going down to probably about a three foot area, finally going into a five foot area out there in the middle. Building that block wall inside the pond gave us the ability to bring that water super close to the patio's edge. It's only about an inch and a half down with that flagstone cantilevered over. You guys saw the construction part of this. The liner actually goes way back about four or five feet to another set of blocks that's keeping that liner all up at the correct elevation. Over here on the left side, we've got our intake bay skimmer. You can see that the breed is swirling around in there. This is just an oversized, awesome skimmer. The thing I about love most about this is it looks like just part of the pond. There's nothing sticking out that would say, this is where all the, the filtration components are for the mechanical skimmer. Inside there, we've got our pump vault hidden, which is housing two of our three inch check valves that feed the plumbing to these external pumps. I'm standing right next to these pumps and they are super quiet. That's what I love most about these EXT pumps is the fact they run so quiet and they're super efficient. Those pumps are feeding all the jets that are in the pond. They're feeding the waterfalls for the wetland and the wetland itself. We're moving about 20 to 24,000 gallons every hour through this entire system. This has cleared up quite a bit in the last three days and it'll clear even more to the point where you can see every piece of gravel inside there. That's five feet deep and it looks so awesome with that jump rock over there. Lots of places for the kids to interact. They'll be able to swim right up against the patio, hang out there as a family. And of course, we've got to talk about this waterfall. I love the way this turned out coming out of our wetland filter, splitting around all these rocks. We've got multiple cascades just every place and it gives such a tranquil sound and the visual is spectacular. Up top here, one of the things Dana said was she was surprised how much the kids loved playing in the wetland filter. It's about like 10 or 11 inches deep. We've got all this really cool looking water flowing around in here. We've got some of our pumps just dumping up on the surface, creating a very nice current going out that waterfall, making it interactive with those stepping stones going through there, shallow areas for the kids to play around. And then of course, we've got some aquatic planting going in there. As this pond matures, these plants are all gonna fill in, kind of blurring that line from aquatic to terrestrial and giving it a really nice soft edge. I could stand here and talk about this pond for hours. I absolutely love the way this turned out. Hopefully you guys do too. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I know you will. Just to give you some specs, we used about 120 tons of stone here. We've got the two EXT pumps. We're somewhere around 15,000 gallons of water, about 40 or 50 tons of gravel, and then we've got all that flagging. So there was quite a bit of material used here. As far as time, this took us 10 days. 10 days with our six man crew. So you can imagine how many man hours that is. If you're thinking about doing a project like this yourself, plan on spending most of your summer building it. <laughs> Guys, thanks for checking us out. See you on the next one.